Hello, everyone. I see we have 10 participants. Uh, we'll take 10, uh, two to three minutes uh, till everyone joins. Uh, thank you for your patience. Hello everyone, thank you for waiting. Hope you have been doing great and thank you for joining. I am Neha Datta and I'm extremely delighted to tell you that I'm part of the Digital Enterprise Management Program. I was exactly on the other side of the screen last year. I also attended the webinar that took place in January. The journey has been rewarding and after this program, I will get to work as a product manager at Publicis Sapient. It is an honor to be able to introduce the people who have made this program a reality. Professor Rajesh Agrawal, uh, Chairperson of One Year Program, Dr. Y. Shekhar, Head of the Center for Digital Enterprise, 
and Ms. Tanu Bhatt in charge of admissions office. Before we begin the presentation, I would request if you have any questions, please post it in the Q&A section and not in the chat window. I now request Professor Rajesh Agrawal to start the presentation. Over to you, Professor. Thank you very much, uh, Neha, and uh, a very warm welcome to all the aspirants to join this pro uh, webinar today evening. And we shall be making a brief presentation of approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And we shall be very happy to take all the questions that you have about the program or any other related matter. So next slide, please, Neha. So yes, so this is the program. Uh, this is the structure of the program. And it's important to know that those who successfully complete the program shall get an MBA degree in uh, digital enterprise management. The program is a one year full-time residential program where participants have to, if they're offered an admission, they have to get relief from their current employment and then come and join here and live here on campus. It's an on-campus program, as I mentioned, residential program, but in the event that pandemic were to return, I hope not, in which case one has to see depending on the government regulations, but otherwise it's an on-campus program. To be able to apply in this program, you have to have at least 36 months of full-time experience in any organization. It need not be continuous. It could have breaks in between, but you must have had a total of 36 months of experience. Uh, to be able to apply, you have to have a valid GRE score or a GMAT score or a CAT score. GRE or GMAT scores could be up to five years old. CAT score could be 2019 examination or onwards. So that's a valid CAT score. One of the favorite questions of the aspirant is about what is the cutoff for some of these uh, you know, course scores. We would like to mention that we do not have a specific cutoff in mind. When we evaluate an application, we evaluate the application in its totality. We look at the profile of the candidate, the background and everything else and the interview uh, panels conversation with the participants and then make a judgment about the you know the candidate so that question i'm answering right up front that many people have next slide please now it's very important to talk to you about the program which we believe once very unique program certainly in india and perhaps globally that uh, this program is an mba program right so obviously you shall be taught the core courses in business management, right? And that's what you see at the bottom of the pyramid is when you join the program, you get exposed to the business management fundamentals. And then once you are taught the business management fundamentals, then you understand how to apply these concepts in digital organization, which basically focuses on emerging concepts, emerging practices and methods right? And then you test waters there. Moving on, when we say anything is digital, at the heart of digital is data and technology, right? And then we want to understand how to leverage the power of digital or data and technology in improving the decision making for organizations. That is what is digital all about. The students then start appreciating the role of digital, uh, the data and technology in the digital world, and how technologies are involved in creating, managing, and analyzing data. That is what is all about in data and technology. Then you may ask the question, so far, so good, but what is the relevance in the practical world? And that's what you can see going up the pyramid, something called digital in industry verticals. There you get to apply these concepts that you've learned thus far, into real life industry verticals. It could be FinTech, it could be healthcare, it could be social sector, retail, and the variety. And that's where you get to kind of understand the real life application. And then moving forward, it's very important to experience the real life into the classroom. How do you do that? We have industry live practical projects, simulation ideas, where you get to dirty your hands in trying to understand how best to apply whatever you have learned in the real life situation. And that is what gives this course an edge 
over anything else because we want to bring in as much of real life as much as possible into the classroom because this program is designed with heavy industry real life bias. Going forward, next slide please, Neha. So as you can see the pyramid that you saw in the previous slide, on the left hand side of your screen, you can see variety of courses in business fundamentals ranging from finance to marketing to strategy, organization behavior that any MBA student would learn. And then you have courses in digital management, which is design thinking, product management and the like. Technology and data courses are you know, blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence. But please be aware when we are talking about these courses is not to so much make you an expert in these areas as a technical person, but application of these ideas in the business management world. And that is the speciality about these courses. Then, of course, the digital industry verticals such as fintech, healthcare, and social sector. And lastly, the uh, you know your experience in projects and what we call capstone exercises. So this is a very uh, interesting design that we have come up with, and uh, we found that industry likes it very much. Next slide, please. It's important to understand the credentials of the institution that you could potentially be considering. I'm happy to say that IIM Udaipur is listed among the top 100 in the world by Financial Times ranking in Global Masters in Management program. Another very important ranking globally is QS World University ranking, and we are present there for third consecutive year. Another thing which is very important is IIM Udaipur is the youngest institute in the world to receive an accreditation called Association to Advance Collegiate School of Business called AACSB. Only 5% of business schools globally have received this accreditation. The reason why I'm talking to you about rankings and accreditation is that to, to, win, to kind of showcase that whatever IIM Udaipur does, does with a bias of quality, does with a bias of excellence. And this is only a small testimony in that regard. Going forward, next slide, please. Because IIM Udaipur overall bias is towards digital. We believe digital is the future, and that's why the Institute has set up a center for digital enterprise, which is headed by Dr. Shekhar. So I would like to request him to speak to you. What is the role of the center in shaping and in fact, initiating this program and then take you forward through this? Over to you, Dr. Shekhar. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Rajesh Agarwal. Good evening to all the participants and good evening to my fellow panelists. It's a pleasure and honor to be speaking to you and especially something uh, about CD, which is very close to me uh, uh, as one would say, a parent to a child kind. Um, I'll take you through what the Center for Digital Enterprise actually does. Um, in the next slide, as uh, Neha uh, scrolls through, the center was actually conceptualized as the place where we can look ahead and figure out you know, what are the kinds of skills, what are the kinds of knowledge bases that would help managers of the future become corporate leaders. And that is where this idea of starting a program called Digital Enterprise Management also came up. And that program has a clear bias towards uh, making managers leaders in the digital world. Towards that, the center actually works in collaboration with the programs office or uh, the admissions office in various capacities in terms of understanding what are the new trends that are coming in? How can they get converted into a course, for instance? How do we collaborate better with the industry to understand real life problems? You must uh, understand here that with digital, what comes in in the package is speed of change. And that change is very rapid. So we want the curriculum to be current. We want your experiences to be relevant. And in that context, we engage deeply with the industry. One of the elements that Professor Rajesh mentioned that you would be doing in this course is the uh, practical uh, problem solving, which is a project that is given to you by the industry. So the center actually works closely with the uh, industry leaders to identify these projects and make them uh, pliable for the students to work on them, be it on the technology side, be it on the analytics side, or be it in the area of developing strategy using both technology and analytics. 
The third aspect is, which is where the center is currently focusing a lot more of its time, is to enable new knowledge to happen, which again comes from interactions with the industry to understand the kind of problems and challenges they face. And towards that, what kind of new knowledge would be required or how does one build research around those areas that can eventually give us access to bet better methods or new frameworks, which then becomes part of the learning of the students in the campus. So in the overall, we are looking at, you know, how do we keep the cutting edge uh, connection alive? How do we make, you know, what's happening in the industry, which the CEOs are actually grappling with as something of interest for the students to work on? And how do we ensure that just the academics and the practitioners work in conjunction to actually be the two sides of the coin that's the coin called digital so that's where uh, the center for digital enterprise is working on trying to look at new initiatives looking at new opportunities and looking at problems and contexts that are contemporary for the students to actually deal with so with that i hand it over back to neha who will speak to you sorry before that i have one more slide to speak about now how does this enable the center to work uh, efficiently and effectively is this particular slide where we have people from the industry who are on our advisory board as you can see it's a wide cross section of the industry we have people from what we call as platform players they are completely online companies and these are people who are either co-founders or heads of certain important functions in those businesses we have people from the traditional lines of business like consumer business to understand consumer behavior to understand how digital is likely to impact that area of the business we also have people from the technology industry who help us understand what kind of trends are taking place in the technology what are the new initiatives that are coming up which become important in course of time or they have relevance in certain specific industries that we can actually look at bringing into the curriculum in terms of verticalization of digital. And of course, all this needs to be balanced by the faculty who understands these and converts them into a curriculum that's of interest to the students. So we also have the faculty members involved in the advisory board who tell us how to shape the curriculum and how to give the best experience to the students who join this particular program. With that, I would like to now hand it over to Neha to take you through her experience as well as uh, what is in store for all of you. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, uh, so talking about my journey, uh, just a second, there is some glitch. Um, talking about my journey, I did my graduation and post-graduation at Jawaharlal Nehru University specializing in German literature, language, and cultural studies. Yes, you heard it right. I am a social science student. I didn't have anything to do with technology as such before I joined this course. Uh, and I have worked at Amazon for around about uh, four years as a senior content reviewer. So when I was deciding to do my MBA, I came across them. I was scared uh, whether I would be able to do it. Uh, I already didn't know anything about commerce and then technology was on top of it. So I talked to a lot of people and did a lot of research and uh, believing that I could do it, I was fixated that this was the only one, uh, DEM was the only one that would serve me best. As the digital is becoming and will be the integral part of the way we work, uh, and I wanted to lead and help the firms and the customers, but I lagged significantly in my technology and business acumen. Uh, so DEM has helped me a lot in catapulting my career. As I mentioned, I will be working as a product manager at Publicis Sapient, delivering to dig uh, digital products for different companies. And this, co this course has actually helped me prepare for the role as well as in tracking the interview. Believe me, in my 90 minutes interview, there were so many things that I recall that we have discussed in our different case studies and discussions in the in our classes. And uh, beside that, we also had our placement preparation support, uh, which included, uh, for example, the sessions we had in the very beginning, which introduced a lot of career options that we would, would get after this course. And they dealt in detail what kind of work we would do, 
the skills we would require, and if we are not up to it as of now, how we could better prepare for it. And we also got a lot of documents, uh, very crisp and concise, uh, telling us how to prepare for our targeted companies as well as our targeted roles. And then uh, we also got our personalized executive, uh, executive coaches who were uh, from premier institutes and uh, stalwarts in the industries. And they helped us in our resume as well as preparing for the interviews and our mock interviews. Uh, also, we also had uh, our 30 to 60 sessions. It was a voluntary exercise. Whoever wanted to hone their conversational and interview skills further could opt for it. Um, and uh, talking about the overall development, we have a lot of clubs uh, and leadership talks that we get to attend. That is fascinating. And if you don't happen to find a club for something, you get to found, uh, found one using your management skills. And uh, I'm proud to say I also founded one. Uh, so yeah, it is our overall experience. If you happen to be someone who's from tech background, you can leverage it and get roles which are tech uh, savvy and leadership and require leadership. And if you are from non-tech, believe me, there are so many things that are there uh, for us as well, as we will be prepared for these roles as I have been. And uh, so it's for everyone. And I wish you all the best. So yeah, right. that was about my experience. Can you go to the previous slide, please? Yes, please. Yeah. Right. So you could see here the placement of the current batch. Uh, so 90% of the current batch has already been placed, though three months of the program is yet to be over. And the average compensation of the batch has been 22 lakhs. Uh, you can see this is a, you know, some of the companies that we have listed here who have hired from the campus. So this is to share with you the data on placement. And if you could go to the last slide, please, Neha. So now the question that comes overall, you know, why DEM? We believe it's a unique program, certainly in the country and perhaps globally, where the management and the digital have been woven together to create a unique program. There is a high demand for the program. You get to receive an MBA degree uh, from the Institute. This program is highly industry oriented, right from the design and delivery. Many of our faculty members come from industry and deliver the classes here. I mean, conduct the courses here. So in that sense, it's an industry oriented program. And as I mentioned a while ago, I am Udaipur is a premier institution and uh, you know, this is in the top 100 listed by the Financial Times ranking. So if you think digital is something that excites you, whether you are engineer or not an engineer, that doesn't matter. If digital excites you, if MBA is something that excites you, then perhaps this is the program that is worth considering for you, but ultimately you have to got to make the decision. Uh, uh, we are not in a position, folks, to respond to the raise hand functionality. I would request you to put in all the questions you have in the Q&A section, right? Not in the chat section, nor by raising hand, but please put in the Q&A section. We'll be happy to answer all your questions. Now I would like to hand over to, next slide please, Neha. So this is, you know, just to mention that if after this session, if you still have some questions left, you're very welcome to con contact the email address that has been given or the phone numbers that are given, please take a screenshot of this so that you can contact us in case any of your query remains unanswered. You're also very welcome to contact Neha. Neha Datta is a current student in the program and she would be happy to answer some of the questions uh, that you have. You're also very welcome to con contact any of our alumni in case you want to contact. Right, so I would like to now hand over to uh, Neha to conduct the rest of the session by you know, helping us answer your questions. And Neha, maybe you can stop sharing the screen and then you know, we can take uh, the questions of the participants. Thank you for your patience, folks. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Rajesh. Uh, so we have few of the questions. Uh, the first one says, and it is from Dinesh, how many cohorts that IMU will take in the current year? So this year we plan to take approximately 70 participants in the program. 
uh, but we don't necessarily have to take them, but uh, we, we, we are planning to take approximately 70 candidates uh, in the program. Uh, the next one is from Abhishek. He asks, how is the placement of this year as recession is in the play? So as you saw that 90% uh, of the batch has been placed already, despite the fears of recession. And you saw a while ago, the compensation, uh, average compensation of the batch. Um, so that's what it is uh, for the moment. Yes. Uh, the next one comes from Uttam Chan. Uh, it says that uh, in them course, marketing automation is included in this program. Uh, so the question is whether marketing automation is included in the program. Uh, let me take that. Uh, uh, something to do with automation is a choice of the faculty. So in any of the subjects, the faculty may look at it in terms of uh, orienting it towards the automation side or the management side of it. Now, I would like to make a very generic statement here. In this course, uh, the intention of this course is not to skill you on a particular tool or a technology. So at no point in time will any particular technology tool will come into fray and say, okay, this is where you will build your expertise in. The whole purpose is to understand the concepts, the applications, the relevance of that in problem solving. And that is where the focus would be. So to answer this question, automation may be there, but there is no specific mention of which tool or what it is going to be. Uh, thank you, Professor. So next one is from Kumar Abhishek. Uh, the question is the project given by the industry uh wait i lost it yeah so the project given by the industry is it something like internship uh, well it is technically not an internship there is no payment and there is no uh, formal engagement that is there the problem is given by the industry the industry also supports the activities of the students by assigning one or two guides from the industry side besides the guides being available from uh, within the IMU fraternity. The entire purpose of this particular project is to enable students to get a hands-on experience on what problem solving through the use of knowledge of technology would be like, and that is where the industry participates in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor. Next one is from Vishal Malik. He, uh, he asks, I have 89.5% uh, percentile in CAT, and three years of work experience. What are my chances for admission? Let me take that. Uh, Vishal, uh, you know, this is a very common question where many, many participants share their score or for that matter, their marks they obtained in undergrad and ask this question in the webinar as to what are their chances. You can imagine it's very hard for us to say anything over the webinar. All I can say is this, as I mentioned a while ago, if you think you are excited about digital, and you are excited about doing an MBA. My request to you would be, don't overthink, go ahead and apply, right? You would know very quickly, you know, whether you get shortlisted and whether you have an interview and how, rather than worrying about your chances so much, the best thing is to go ahead and apply. So as I said, we can't answer over a webinar, what are your chances? Um, the next question is from Shritaj Sharma. It asks, uh, can you please elaborate which elements of the program help for product management roles? Uh, I would take that up first. Uh, so uh, talking about the product management, we had specialized course for that, uh, which had 20 sessions. And beside that, we also had uh, design thinking and agile and DevOps, which also come handy uh, when you talk about product management. And uh, beside that, all the courses that you have, they do come somewhere here or there because you have to think from different perspectives and angles when you are planning how to design the uh, design the product. So all the strategic thinking, different courses will come handy in that. In doing the analysis, even the marketing will come handy in that. Uh, thank Anything? you, Deha. You've put it up well. Uh, I would like to step in here to answer that this program is not focused on one topic, one role, one subject. It is a very general, uh, general management uh, program in a sense, but the bias is towards digital. Now, the thing about digital is that it's transforming the way businesses are actually conducting themselves on the elements of speed, uh, speed of change that they deal with, on the scale of complexity that they deal with, and 
the kind of tools and access to information they get. And that is where this program prepares you. Now, it could be useful for you, as Neha mentioned, in the area of product management. There, is, uh, there are subjects on analytics, which can help you to take up roles in analytics, which can contribute to product management. There are uh, subjects which are in strategy, which can help you understand you know, how a new product development can happen, which can also be part of product management, design thinking, and the use of tools. So you, would you be able to conceptualize how by using artificial intelligence, you can come up with a new solution altogether. Now, this is where the program becomes very, very distinct. It is role agnostic, but it prepares you for various kinds of roles that the industry is expecting you to perform. Thank you, Professor. And uh, he's very well right in that. For example, we picked up a tool in uh, Agile and DevOps, and then that I've used very heavily and for, prepare, for preparing my decks for the interviews. So yeah. Uh, next one is from Mr. Pratik. Uh, working in the development sector for four years as an urban planner and a city manager in the urban development and housing department. What are the career options I may get as someone with a non-tech background? Okay, uh, let me take that question. Uh, Pratik, very relevant question and very interesting one too. Uh, there are two answers from my side. One is uh, the DEM program, uh, as Professor Rajesh mentioned, doesn't come with any particular bias for selection, which means it doesn't matter whether you're an engineer, non-engineer, whether you're from a commerce background or arts or science background, really doesn't matter. It is in that sense open. And through that, you experience the transformation which Neha mentioned about her journey to actually become a manager. And the other side, which is the output, is also very, very unbiased. It doesn't prepare you for a particular industry or a particular role. So both sides are quite open. So what we are doing is enabling the students to understand my business management in the context of digital. And through that, they can join any kind of organization that is interested in hiring managers who can drive digital initiatives in their organizations. Now, this is what the objective of the program is. However, since you've mentioned specifically about your background, we believe urban planning and the roles that you've talked about have a lot to do with digital. Smart city is a classic example of that. And with uh, digitalization of various kinds happening in that particular sector, your experience, your knowledge, which is what we call as domain knowledge, can actually contribute significantly to the learnings and the contributions one can make to that particular industry in specific. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we have some great questions, and uh, the next one is from an anonymous person. Uh, the question one is, is this program considered equivalent to two-year MBA for the industry, by the industry? Would you like to take it, Professor? Or... Uh, I would repeat the question. Is this program considered equivalent to two-year MBA by the industry? Okay, let me take that. So the industry comes to the two-year MBA uh, recruitment largely looking at freshers uh, who don't have any experience or may have uh, you know, very few years of experience. When it comes to the one-year MBA program graduates, they are looking for people with experience of minimum three years. We have realized that our batches who are here have an, on an average approximately five years of experience. So in that sense, when companies are looking at people with experience, they look at one-year MBA program and two-year MBA, as I said, is a different kind of a, yeah. So that's what it is. Uh, there is a similar question. Uh, how does I am you uh, by, uh, Joshi, uh, how does IIMU offers, uh, offer a master's degree by offering one-year program? Isn't this a UGC directive to offer degree via two-year course? So as you may be aware, in 2017, Government of India enacted a law in the parliament called IIM Act 2017. And in that act, each IIM board of governors is empowered to design courses and they give degrees and diplomas as it thinks appropriate. So in that sense, the UGC directive doesn't quite apply to IAMs, but you know, the, we have received similar concerns from the government and we are talking to the government to kind of sort this out. Uh, the next question uh, is, what are the job roles one can expect after this program? 
uh, will the program help a person to diversify his her profile to other various roles and into tech industry okay let me take that uh, as i mentioned earlier and which is also the objective of this particular program is to enable people to become great managers and leaders in the digital space uh, let me repeat that there is no bias uh, in the input side which is the qualification or the background and similarly the industry doesn't come with a bias in terms of saying that they would want only a particular kind of profile however we must respect that industry has its needs and towards that they come to the institute to look at campus placement depending on their needs the roles open up so they come up with their uh, job descriptions and the program thus far has met with the kind of expectations that the industry has put uh, on it so towards that there is a generalization of knowledge that is applied and the students find themselves comfortable in the kind of roles that the industry has offered to them so it's not preparing you for a particular job or in a particular organization and uh, for a particular career path so the students therefore get a wide variety and they pick and choose from that similarly the organizations can be of tech or non tech uh, in their interests it, it's not just defined by the nature of the organization a consumer product company can also come saying that we want people with strong technology backgrounds to join us but that's how they would come and put their request against that whoever meets their expectations goes through the process that's how it is the program does not create any particular bias towards any particular role thank you professor uh, the next one is is the course content too hectic let me please take that one uh, so i believe i have repeated this multiple time that i come from a non tech and non commerce background so uh, you can take me as a person who didn't know anything about this and everything was new for me uh but believe me the course content has been designed very beautifully not just the uh, choice of the courses but also the content i was wondering before join joining how uh, it would do justice as in like we have so many courses to study in the 17 in just 5 months the 17 courses the business fundamentals one followed by the technological one but uh the course content has been designed so beautifully they give it to you in a very concise and focused manner you will not be overwhelmed it is not that all the courses will be running parallelly uh some courses will begin begin early and then they will end and then some others will begin you will not be overwhelmed if you prepare well uh you read all the case studies and you study for them it is very balanced it can be balanced and beside that you can also do other activities it can be done okay let me add to that thanks again neha for uh, giving Uh, an experiential response to it uh let me put it in perspective of saying if you think that this is an extension of your graduate program the answer is no it has its own charm it has its own pressures it has its own demands as designers of this course we know how much of load students can take and to that extent we respect and honor that so this course never makes you feel completely stressed out get you into panic situation at the same time it's not too far away from it so there is enough of pressure there is enough of demand put into it because that's how real life work is and since you already have some work experience you'll be able to relate to these kind of demands and pressures far better than those who never worked before thank you professor uh, the next one is is the program mainly for personals who already are at managerial positions no like we said earlier there is no particular bias towards it yeah um and also adding to that i was working as a content senior content reviewer and not as a manager but will be working as one now uh the next question is i come from business development profile and into heavy industry product segment and want to shift to tech industry with more intense roles with this pro uh, will this program help me to achieve my objectives so we don't guarantee it but it can we don't make any promise that this will lead you to a particular kind of role and a particular kind of industry but digital has both the management and technology aspects so you have a fair chance of switching thank you professor 
Uh, so next one, I think, um, Ms. Tanu, you can help us. Uh, what is the application deadline for this program? The application deadline for this program is 2nd February. Uh, thank you. Uh, next one is, uh, I have 12 years of experience as CA. Can I enroll with uh, the placement option? Let me take that. Uh, you know, we have normally found that people with three to eight or nine years of experience, it's relatively easy to find placements for. The moment you have 10 years or over 10 years of experience, uh, it's extremely difficult to find a placement. So in fact, uh, those of you who have 10 or more years of experience, I would discourage you from applying simply because uh, it's very difficult to find a placement. There's one option though, that if you're wanting to join the program as a sabbatical candidate, meaning you take a leave from your employer and want to come here and study and go back to your employer without looking for uh, and placement, then you're very welcome to apply as a sabbatical candidate. Both those options are displayed on the website as you apply. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, next one is, uh, what is the criteria for applicants to be considered and how can he increase his chance for an admission into a program? Let me take that. So uh, what we look for is strong academic credentials, good work experience, and strong articulation skills. Now, if I just put that across, that if you've been a consistent performer, you are doing well at, at your workplace, you can actually face situations, think on your feet and things like that you uh, have a good chance of getting into this program. Thank you, Professor. The next one is from Piyush. Does working as a proprietor count towards valid work experience? Uh, Tanu, you can take that question. Come again, please, Neha. Uh, does working as a proprietor count towards a valid work experience? Yes, uh, the entrepreneurship work experience will be countable, but uh, I I re request you that you can send a mail to admission office. We will uh, guide you with a list of documents required to uh, validate your entrepreneurship. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question is anonymous one. Uh, my work experience is from chemical domain. Will it be difficult for me to cope up with the course? Uh, the answer is no. I mean, uh, it's going to be as easy or as difficult as it is for Neha or for anybody else. Yeah, true. Uh, next one is from Abhishek. Can we get a role in FMCG through them? Okay, so uh, like I said, there's no particular bias. If there's an FMCG company that comes to hire from this particular program, you stand a good chance. Uh, next one is from Ayush. Uh, I wanted to enroll for this course, but my work experience is just lacking two months. Will I be eligible? Uh, got two years and 10 months of experience as per March 2023. Ayush, you have to try next year. Uh, three years is a hard thing that you must meet. Uh, uh, Satyam is asking, are there any prerequisites with regards to digital knowledge? Uh, that is the program that the program requires from the applicant side. Kindly also explain the shortlisting process. I think both have been answered. The answer is there is no prerequisite. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, the shortlisting is done on the basis of the overall profile of the candidate. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Anushriti. Uh, does consulting companies come for placement? Uh, next one is also BFSI sector also comes. Consulting companies have come so far. BFSI, uh, they have not uh, visited DEM program, but they visit IMU uh, quite a bit. Uh, thank you, Professor. Next one is uh, about the candidate being suitable for this course and the CAT score or the professional background or anything more. Uh, it's by Rishu Kumari. Uh, yeah, so the, talking about uh, the candidate suitability, the CAT score, and the background which is required for this role. Uh, 
Yes, that's true. So when we look at the shortlisting, we look at the your score, certainly your background and make an overall judgment and the admissions committee decide whether to shortlist or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so next one is regarding the loan process. Uh, it's from uh, Vimal Chandra Joshi. In case I get through the selection process, I will need a student loan to fund the fee. Can I raise the loan without a guarantor or collateral? Well, uh, I, uh, you can write to admission office regarding the bank assistance. We will guide you for that. And actually, it can vary from bank to bank, right, as to what is the exact loan process. We have a tie-up with State Bank of India. And, uh, you know, so they have something called scholar loan and the admissions office can guide you. But I understand it's a very smooth process and getting a loan is not very hard. Uh, yes, speaking from personal experience, yes, it is a smooth process. Thank you, Professor. Uh, next one is from uh, Samir Jadav. Does the program offer industrial visits or similar activities to learn uh, using the actual problem statements from industries? Okay, let me answer this. Um, uh, by design, there is no industry visit uh, by the students. Uh, there's hardly any time for that. Uh, but off late, during the projects, some of the companies have invited the students to their organizations to understand some elements of their business processes. So this may be an initiative of the industry, but it is not by design of the program. Uh, thank you, Professor. Next one is regarding the placements. Uh, it is from Avikul. Are the placements to be taken along with the regular PGP batch? What are the differences and similarities, if any? Okay, let me answer that. Uh, placement is not something that IIMU uh, influences or controls. It only facilitates. It's left to the organizations when they want to come and who they want to select from, which is whether it's from the two-year program or from one-year program. So we have had experiences of both. There were companies that came specifically for the DEM program, whereas there were companies that came specifically to IIM Udaipur. So we have other programs too from where the selection happened. Mm -hmm. Next one is from Vimal. I have over 20 years of experience in content and journalism. I am very keen to join and I have already uh, applied for it, but I want to know, am I the right candidate for this program and whether I am eligible? See, from a learning perspective, teaching perspective, you're a great candidate, but from a placement perspective, you aren't. So if you're looking at this as an opportunity to either switch roles, careers, industries, those kind of things, uh, this will be very difficult for uh, uh, us to manage your expectation. But if your interest lies in understanding how digital works and how uh, your background, um, which I understand is in the area of journalism. Journalism, uh, journalism content, yeah. is part of a big change as far as technology is concerned, which you are far more familiar uh, than most of us here. But you can understand how businesses look at it this uh, course can definitely further you or help you understand that far better. So in Thank you, case, if you are interested to apply, then you should apply more as a sabbatical candidate. Sabbatical. So you can't place you. And uh, so if you have applied as a regular candidate, uh, you may need to rethink and perhaps apply as a, as a candidate requiring, you know, coming under sabbatical option. Thank you, professors. Next one is from Parhana Raza. Uh, she has a six-year gap between 12 and, uh, and grad and have three years of experience of running her own business. Will she be considered for the admission? Farhan Raza, sorry. Yeah, Farhan, like uh, you have six years of gap between your 12th and your graduation and uh, then you have experience. Regarding experience, you can, the experience will be considered. That's required your uh, entrepreneurship documents. Uh, regarding your gap, I think that if you can justify that, like because it's a big gap between your twelfth and graduation. So I suggest that you can uh, talk to talk, you can call us, or you can write us a mail in this regard. We will guide you. Mm -hmm. uh, next one is an anonymous one. Can a mechanical engineer apply for the course with five years experience in mechanical design and production? Does it include industry four point oh? that will be helpful for a mechanical person with no prior experience in digital field. Will there be an issue in placement? So uh, uh, mechanical engineer really, really doesn't uh, matter to us in terms of uh, 
letting people join the program. So which is what we've been saying, we have no particular bias while we are doing this selection uh, in so far as your qualifications are concerned. The other part is, is industry 4.0 taught? No, industry 4.0 is not taught in this particular program, largely because we still don't have a faculty in this country who can teach enough number of sessions on that topic. Otherwise it would have come in by now. However, people from the industry who come and speak, which Neha spoke about in her uh, talk, they speak about Industry 4.0. So it's not taught as a subject, but it's definitely discussed in the class. The third aspect is, will it help you in getting placement in a manufacturing organization? We can't guarantee you that. If it attracts a manufacturing organization to hire from a management school, uh, which is not, uh, you know, a very big thing. Uh, I mean, it, it's a rather unusual thing for a manufacturing industry to hire from a management school. That happens uh, all well for you. Uh, thank you, Professor. Yes, we don't have a course uh, specifically, but we did touch upon it in our IoT and AI courses. Uh, thank you for the question. Next one is from Ritesh Rai. Uh, I am working right now in an organization so if I resign, I have to serve still a notice period. So before the con uh, commencement of the course, I might not uh, be able to furnish the service certificate. So is the admission board flexible with that? Let me answer that. So on the date of your joining the program, you should be relieved from the employment, right? We would require a relieving letter from your employer. We are flexible to the extent of a week or two this way, that way, but not more than that. Right, so that's what is the process. Uh, so next one, next one talks about the placement. What are the placement statistics for the 2023 DEM batch? The question is from Soumya Saxena. Soumya, a while ago we shared about the placement data. We mentioned that 90% of the batch is placed already with an average compensation of 22 lakhs. We shared the names of the companies, but I invite you to go to our website where you can download the entire report of the previous year. Right, so that you can see the data for all the previous years. The current year will be placed on the website later, but so far so good in terms of placement. Yeah, thank you, Professor. And also the placement report is uh, audited. Uh, the next one is from Dinesh. After graduation, if there is any gap and se have seven uh, years experience, can I apply? Let me take that. Dinesh, you can certainly apply uh, in terms of uh, your seven years is very much within the eligibility criteria. If you have a gap, I don't know how much of a gap that is. Even if it's whatever it is significant, then maybe the panel, if you're shortlisted, may like to ask you questions and understand, but you can go ahead and apply. Mm -hmm. uh, again, someone has asked about the deadline to apply. I request you, Ms. Sangu, to repeat that again. Yeah, the final deadline to apply for the program is 2nd Feb. I recommend that you can go on the website and there is an important uh, date section where you can get the details of all the cycles with the date of deadline and the announcement of a result. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next one is, I have uh, from Rakesh, I have six years work experience in one IT company mm -hmm. uh, as software engineer. What roles will I get after completing this course if I decide to join the same company after course completion? Rakesh, uh, it is best for you to discuss this internally and find out. Uh, we have no answer to your question, uh, which could uh, help you understand this because this varies from organization to organization and it is part of their policy. So uh, my advice to you would be that you discuss it with your manager or you know a skip manager and uh, uh, understand what your organization helps you with. Uh, the next question is about uh, what is the average work experience of the current batch? So the average work experience is uh, around five and a half years. And somebody asking about what is the average age of part, you know, participants is around 26 to 27 years. That's the average age. Uh, thank you, Professor. Next one is from Kush. If we apply to both DEM and GSCM, does IMU take it positively or negatively? Positively. We actually... Uh, should say neutral, that's the answer. It really doesn't matter if you've applied to both the programs. There have been candidates who have been offered both uh, selections uh, into both the programs and they have made a choice. Thank you, Professor. 
So next one is about the program fee as well as the average income salary that we get post placements. The program okay. fee and the placement. As far as average, yes. Yeah, so. Concerned, it is twenty two point six lakh all inclusive. That includes your tuition materials, hostel stay, food, all inclusive. Right, that's the twenty two point six lakh. And the question related to average incoming salary, are you, I think you're referring to the placement. We don't know what's going to be next year. We talked about the current placement, approximately 22 lakhs for the 90% of the batch that is placed. Thank you, Professor. Next one is from Kush talking about, does the program cover evaluation of financials through case studies? The answer is yes. We do have a course uh, regarding that, uh, that is finance. And before that, we also have accounts. Uh, Professor Rajesh, would you like to talk a bit about this? I don't quite understand evaluation of financials. I don't know what does it mean. Evaluation of each course happens through a variety of ways. We have you know, surprise quizzes. We have midterm and term examination. We have assignments. So different faculty members choose what is the best evaluation method for their respective courses. I, I think Rajesh, the question intended to know whether they will be taught how to evaluate companies' performances in yeah. finance. Uh, Okay, yeah, sure. So the finance course will cover that, uh, how to evaluate the performance of companies. You will also have projects, uh, assignments regarding that. And then, yes, case studies, lots of case studies. In lots of them, yes. <laughs> um, yes, so someone has asked what would be the minimum uh, CAD percentile score and what is the gender ratio? Yeah, so talking about the gender ratio, yeah. What is that? Sorry. Uh, what gender ratio do we currently have in the DEM program? It's around 25%, I yeah, think. 25%. Yeah, 25%. So, yeah, Jennifer, the uh, challenge always has been to try and strike a parity. It's, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we are governed by the number of applicants and the quality of the applications, right? Mm -hmm. So that is how the selection happens. We don't go with a particular yardstick saying that so many women and so many men will join this particular program. We want the cohort uh, to be the best that we can uh, pick from. And as Professor Rajesh mentioned earlier, in a slightly different context, we don't try to fill up seats because there are seats. So we want to be absolutely sure that we are picking up the right set of candidates. And therefore, there is always certain kind of variability in terms of the gender mix or in terms of uh, the other mixes that typically a cohort comes up with. Uh, we have received some questions regarding the selection criteria about the scores and then uh, about the course itself, uh, its rigor, uh, whether the students have to make trade-offs uh, among networking, studies, and sleep, and comparing it with the one-year MBA program like ISB, PGP. Okay, so I would like I can see four or five questions which are related. Yeah, similar in that. I give a comprehensive answer to all of this. Many of the questions are, what is the minimum cutoff uh, my answer is that we do not have a cutoff in mind. You know, we look at the application in its totality and we evaluate the applicant's profile overall. Second question is that, you know, what are the different steps at how are the different stages you screen and decide? Again, you know, as I said that I have one answer for all this question, that if digital excites you, if MBA excites you, leave it to us to decide the next steps rather than worrying overly about whether you have enough of a score. So please go ahead and apply. Do not worry about, you don't know whether your score is too low or too high. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and apply is my simple answer. If I were you, I will not double guess, right? And then how much of weightage is given to each component? Again, it's an admission committee's call for every, every time. So we can't discuss this over a webinar, as you can imagine, right? So my suggestion to all of you would be, if you're excited about these two things, please go ahead and apply. That's the best way forward. And uh, with respect to the question about the rigor of the program, it is a rigorous program. I'll be lying if I say it's a cakewalk. It is a rigorous program. It will lose its value and relevance if the rigor drops, right? You don't want to join a good prestigious IAMS program unless it's rigorous. You're talking about networking, sleep, and on studies. All the students, including Neha, who is participating here, has to work hard. So if you know rigor worries you, then it's a worrisome thing. But uh, if you know if you are interested in high quality program, 
then sure, it has to be rigorous and it is a rigorous program. Uh, thank you, Professor. The next one is uh, from an anonymous uh, Rindi. Is program also a good option for tech background startup founders? Okay, let me answer that. Uh, first is you, you have to make those big checks on those boxes that you have 36 months of work experience, etc. But uh, on a more uh, uh, philosophical side, if you're in a startup mode, it is more important that you focus on your startup now than switch over to academics. Your business will demand your time. And typically this is what we have seen with other candidates that they try to balance the two and it doesn't work. So invariably you lose out to those questions where you know how is the business going to sustain itself if you are not going to pay attention to it in in this particular phase of the business at the same time let me also tell you people try to answer that by saying that you know we'll manage both this program doesn't give you time for anything else and as we've said you know you can't be working your full time into this program so there's no time for you to look back into your business if you're looking into your business you'll definitely have a huge challenge with the program. If you're looking into the program, you'll have a challenge with your business. So depending on what stage of the startup you're in, I would request you to take a call on it. And if you are meeting with the other conditions, then I leave it to you to decide whether you want to apply or not. Thank you, Professor. Next one is regarding the uh, work experience being less for about three months. Uh, it has already been mentioned that it is a hard deadline. Uh, it is a hard line. Uh, 36 months means 36 months. I'm sorry. Please apply next year. Uh, next one is from an anonymous Tendi. I have work experience of five years in hotel industry sales, aspiring to go into digital media. I had a scholarship from ITC Hotels from uh, for undergraduation in hotel management. Would the course be suitable for me? Also, how an EWS category and diversity factor be useful in the selection criteria? Okay, let me answer that. Hospitality industry is a great uh, case uh, that is discussed as far as uh, uh, digitalization is concerned. But will you get a job there uh, after the program? If that, that's your uh, associated question, we don't know. We still haven't attracted uh, hospitality industry to hire from IIMs. Uh, so you have to be watchful. But if you're switching over uh, industry, it is definitely feasible. Two, we as we mentioned earlier, we are not filling up seats by any criterion other than the quality. So we don't have any kind of reservations, EWS or for gender or for any other factor. So we look at the overall profile of the candidate and if it fits into the kind of pool that we're looking at, the candidate gets shortlisted and becomes available for doing a personal interview. If the candidate does well in the personal interview, the candidate gets a call for admission. Thank you, Professor. Next one is regarding placement. Can having uh, MTech before one year MBA be an issue with the, uh, pose an issue with the placement? No. Okay. No, there uh, are lots of postgraduates who do MBA. Thank you, Professor. Also, I have a postgraduate and I did my MBA after that. Uh, next one is from Pradeep. I am. I have been working as a bank teller in a major public sector bank for uh, the past four years. The curriculum of them doesn't relate much with my work experience. Although I'm very excited about the course, how much of a factor my past work experience can be in securing a seat or rather losing it? Okay, let me answer this question in terms of saying what you have done is important for us in terms of understanding how much of business have you understood what you have to actually look at is that it's the future is not the extension of your past if you want to see it in that manner this course is transformational and uh, neha's uh, uh, discussion or presentation of self is an indication of that she moved from a languages background now to a product management uh, area so uh, the future can be completely different. In that context, your current experience, your uh, uh, current uh, uh, anxiety or aspirations, they all stand uh, neutral. Let me put it that way. 
they will neither have uh, a favor uh, or uh, uh, go against. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, may, the next one, maybe, uh, Ms. Tanu, you can help with that. After submitting an application, how much time does it take for processing? Take around 20 to 20 days. Uh, 20 to 20 days, you'll get the outcome of the application. Thank you. Uh, I have been, uh, it is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, I have been teaching independently for last six years, Master of Mathematics EPBM 16 from IIM Calcutta Research Assistant at IIM Kashipur. MX and IBM experience, will it help? Uh, difficult to answer it as will it help? Yes, if you're interested in uh, uh, understanding digital and uh, I don't know your career aspirations after that, if it helps you get there, it's fine. So uh, like we mentioned, we have no particular bias towards what kind of work you did as long as you've clocked in 36 months of uh, mm -hmm. industrial experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the next one is, when will the interview be conducted for this cycle? It is from Reshu Kumari. So uh, after the deadline ends, the interview process will start within a week. Thank you. Uh, so next one is an interesting one. Uh, is the program going to cover Metaverse as upcoming technology? Uh, uh, what did you do in Metaverse, Neha? Uh, so we had a project from Accenture where they okay. came to us and uh, we had we had to choose and give the options of three different uh, industries that we wanted to Fair take. Enough. I, and then I we wanted, wanted to, re and yeah, the, we had to do the to, research. Yeah. Uh, Preempt that. Metaverse yeah. is not yet a subject that can be taught because it's still yeah. in practice. So there are a lot of practice sessions around Metaverse. There are a lot of discussions that happen around Metaverse. So um, it's, it's topic of interest. Let me put it that way. It's not a subject that is taught. Yes, thank you, Professor. Uh, so I have a failed venture after leaving my job of 3.5 years. So I have no work experience for last 15 months. Does that negatively affect my selection? Will I be considered? Uh, it's from an anonymous attendee. Yeah, so let me answer that saying. Difficult to say whether it will negatively or positively impact, but it will be a question that will definitely be asked and depending on how you answer that uh, and come up with uh, your reasons for what they are, the panel may take a look uh, at your overall candidature. Thank you, Professor. So the next one is regarding the GMAT. Uh, is the GMAT online acceptable? Yes, it is acceptable. Uh, thank you. Uh, next one is, can a person apply for both DEM and GSM in the same round? Yes. The next one is, uh, is the GRE acceptable? Yes, GRE, GMAT, CAT, all three are acceptable. I think uh, that is all that we had. We have answered all the questions. Thank you so much for joining. There is one which I'm seeing. I don't know if we looked at that. Uh, I'm oh, yeah. seeing for 116 months. Months of it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Very interested. So 116 months is very close to 120, which is 10 years. Uh, uh, you you are in in the orange zone, if I were to put it in that manner. Difficult for us to uh, look at placements, largely because organizations have a belief that people with uh, you know less than eight years of work experience can be molded into roles that they want to. Uh, uh, fill up through campus placements. Beyond that, these are people who've got a little hardened in their practices and thought processes, which will make it difficult for them to uh, get them adapted to a new environment. Now, this is a perception so which actually drives placements. So difficult for us to look at your profile from a placement point of view at this juncture. Thank you, Professor. Next one is regarding the job profiles. Uh, it is from Digvijay. Will the job profiles post course be more on technical side or managerial side or mix of both? So will the job profiles, the, see job profiles are industry led. 
and the industry can come with all kinds of job profiles. So for instance, there are companies that come with uh, requirements in the managerial positions for analytics and expect you to have very strong statistics and mathematical background. So you may even have to take up their entrance exams and uh, get through those. At the same time, there are companies that come with uh, similar roles in business analytics and expect you to have a managerial perspective onto it. So as we mentioned earlier, the course doesn't train you to be in one of the two roles. It equips you to handle both the roles. In some cases, you may have to put in some extra effort uh, to actually get into the organization of choice with the kind of roles that they post. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor. So it's regarding the interview location being Mumbai. I think it's more regarding whether we get the job pro roles for Mumbai location. No, no. Interviews are all online. Online. Interviews are okay. not face to face. Jobs, we don't know where you get placed if it's a question. Ah, okay. Ah, you, you mean uh, he, uh, the person meant the, no, uh, what do you call it? Interview. Admission interview. Yeah. yeah Sorry, my bad. You, you are a phase ahead, uh, Neha. Yes, They're exactly. That is why interview to me sound more like placements now. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. Next one is from Krishna. Uh, I will be giving my GRE in February, but uh, have given my CAT already. Could I submit my GRE at a later time? Let me take this and I can seek Tanul's help if need be. You can try your luck with the current score. And if you sail through, fine. If you don't, you can always apply later with your... Uh, you know, GRE score in February because uh, by that time it may be too late for you to apply because the last in February we are closing the application. So I don't think so you are in condition to apply with the GRE score that time. Maybe you should apply with the CAT score. CAT score, yeah. Thank you. So next one is about the interview process, the admission interview process. Do you want candidates to have good general knowledge also? Do you ask TK questions in the interview? Yeah, it is very general to have knowledge. Uh, but general knowledge is a very wide subject. As a guideline to the panelists, we uh, definitely request them not to ask questions for which only they know the answers. So to that extent, uh, we do not probe on general knowledge, but we definitely probe in the areas of interest. So if the candidate expresses interest in a particular field, please anticipate follow through questions on them. Uh, thank you. Next one is regarding the availability of scholarships. I don't, know. I don't have any scholarship in this program. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is regarding the course curriculum. Uh, it is from an anonymous attendee. Does the program curriculum include understanding of social media statistics as well? Yeah, absolutely. It does. Okay. Um, and the uh, next one is from Kush. Is financial management also one year course? Uh, I can clarify in a one year MBA program, we have a subject on financial management. If that's your question is yes, we have a subject. Thank you, Professor. Also, if you are very interested in that in the third term, uh, there are many courses which are electives and you can choose courses like hedge, um, hedge funds and uh, financial investment. Uh, so there are many courses like related to finance in the third term. And if you're interested in specializing in the, into that, you can pick that up uh, in the third term. Uh, so the next one is from an anonymous attendee. What core competence you are looking for in a candidate for them? Okay, so uh, there's nothing as core. What we want is, uh, in, when we say overall, we are looking at, you know, how were you as an academic student during your graduate days and earlier than that? The consistency, your learning habits, your ability to articulate those kinds of knowledges. And then when you have got into a workplace, the kind of work you've been doing and how does that make an impact in the environment that you're in? What kind of business is your organization in? What kind of an industry your uh, organization is in? And what kind of influence does the industry have on the environment? So these are the kind of things related to the candidate's interest, work experience, and academic uh, performances that we look at. So there isn't anything specific that we're asking or we are suggesting you must have uh, to come into this program with. Thank you, Professor. Uh, do we happen to have any more questions? Because uh, in the Q&A section, we don't see 
questions as such. I would like to say this because there were hundreds of questions. We have answered as many as possible. If we have inadvertently missed out on answering any question, you are please very welcome to write to us or you know call us up at the number that were displayed on the screen a while ago. And um, I would also like to say this that uh, you know you have a variety of questions. You have the anxiety. You have all sorts of you know things going in your mind. But if I were you, the best way to address this is, you know, as I said, not to overly think and just go ahead and apply. I mean, that's that's the best way. And you'll quickly go get to know where you stand in terms of your application and hope that uh, this, you know, your career aspirations are most important. And uh, if your career aspirations align with the objectives of the program, then you can stand to benefit from the program. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank all my panelists especially Neha for hosting this webinar and uh, wish that uh, you, you, know, you take a good decision, a decision that's good for you and um, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much again for attending this webinar. Bye Thank, for, you. Bye. Thank bye. you everyone. Thank you professors. All the best for your applications. <laughs>